All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA task list fifth edition series with C8, evaluate the validity and reliability of measurement procedures. This really should also include accuracy because we're going to cover all three. Your data must be valid, reliable, and accurate for that data to be useful in your behavior change procedures. That's what we're gonna cover today. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already to get all of our updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday. Shout out, work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So starting with the essential indicators of trustworthy measurement. These include validity, accuracy, and reliability. Data must be all three to be useful. Validity says the measured data is directly related to the target behavior, meaning your measurement is measuring what you intend to measure. If I'm measuring nail biting, then I'm actually measuring nail biting. So validity just says you're measuring what you intend to measure. Accuracy says the value or the data that you measure match what actually occurred. So if nail biting occurred 10 times, to be accurate, I would need to record 10 times. And then reliability says repeated measurements produce the same data each time, meaning if every single time I measure nail biting that happens 10 times, I'm getting that same result each and every time. So we're going to go through all three of these. Quick question, inter-observer agreement is most related to what? Now, inter-observer agreement could be considered the fourth indicator, but we're going to talk about IOA in a separate video entirely. An inter-observer agreement is really related to data that are believable. That is kind of the key with IOA. A, data match what actually occurred is accuracy. Repeated measures producing the same data is reliability. And data are from the actual target behavior is validity. IOA really indicates that data are believable. Validity. Validity is measured data directly related to target behavior or phenomenon. Again, this just says you're actually measuring what you intend to measure. If you ask your technician to measure on-task behavior, if they're measuring on-task behavior, that measurement is valid. So ask yourself the question, was my target behavior actually measured? Valid data requires three things. You're directly measuring the socially significant target behavior. Keyword here, directly. Two, you're measuring the dimension of the behavior that is relevant to your goal. Picking what you're measuring is very important. If you need frequency and you're measuring duration, that's not going to be relevant to your goal. It's not going to be very valid. And then three, behavior is measured under relevant or typical conditions, meaning we want to measure behavior when it typically occurs, when it might typically be punished, when it might typically be reinforced. It doesn't do as much good to start measuring behavior where that behavior either never occurs or that learner is never in that situation. So you want to pick situations and conditions that are actually going to happen and produce the behavior. So question, your target behavior is swiping cards. This occurs 10 times per minute. What would make your data valid? So before you even answer the question, just predict what's going to make our data valid. Well, we know valid data are data that measure what we're intending to measure. So if our target behavior is swiping cards, then valid data will be data that is measured by measuring swiping cards. So A, your technician measures 10 times per minute. Well, that might be accurate, but what are we measuring, right? Data can be valid, but not accurate. Data can be accurate, but not valid. A doesn't tell us what we're measuring. We can't say it's valid. B, your technician measures swiping cards eight times per minute. All right, B looks good. Don't get confused because we're measuring swiping cards, which is our target, making it valid. Even though our data aren't accurate, we're still valid. And then C, two technicians measure 10 times per minute. Well, we have inter-observer agreement. We have accuracy. We just don't know what we're measuring. We can't say it's valid. The only one we can truly say is valid is B, because we're measuring what we're intending to measure. Now, accuracy. Accuracy says, accuracy says data are recorded equal to what actually occurred, meaning you're just marking down or recording the true value of the true 
number. If the behavior occurs six minutes, accurate data will indicate six minutes. Accuracy is that straightforward. Now, accuracy is often compromised due to measurement bias. And the key with measurement bias is measurement bias are errors that are non-random, meaning these don't happen by chance. They happen due to a bias. So if I need my client to say ball five times in a row to meet a goal, they say it four times, but on the fifth, they mess up. Yet I measure five times correct anyway. That data aren't accurate and measurement bias is occurring. Measurement bias happens all the time in self-management. Think about exercising or running. If your goal is to run a mile in six minutes, if you get six minutes and five seconds, the temptation to, to mark down six minutes is very high. That's measurement bias. It's non-random errors due to user bias. So question, your target behavior is swiping cards. This occurs 10 times per minute. Clapping occurs five times per minute. What would make your data accurate? So all we're looking for here is accuracy. Accuracy is either going to be measuring 10 times per minute or measuring five times per minute, depending on the behavior. So A, your technician records clapping five times per minute. Well, A is accurate. So we're answering the question. Does it make it valid because our target behavior is swiping, but the data are accurate? Clapping occurred five times per minute. That's what we recorded. B, your technician records swiping eight times. Well, that is inaccurate because swiping occurred 10 times. And C, your technician records five times once and then six times. That's, I'm not even sure what C is implying, right? So C doesn't really make much sense in the context of looking for accuracy. So the, the moral of the story here is data can be accurate but not valid. Data can be valid but not accurate. It, it doesn't, just because it's one thing doesn't make it the other two. So you've got to be very careful both when you're actually measuring in practice and when you're answering the question. If the question is asking about accuracy, you need to answer the question looking for the answer that reflects accuracy. And then reliability. These are data taken on the same event that produced the same data each time. It does not mean the data are accurate or reliable. Can't emphasize that enough. So just because we're taking data on the same event and producing the same data each time does not mean I'm taking data on my target behavior. And it doesn't mean my data are accurate. I could be taking totally wrong data on the totally wrong target over and over again. That'd be reliable. It doesn't make it good data, but it is reliable data. So understand that and really internalize that concept. So if I measure sneezing 10 days in a row and each day I consistently record the same data, that's reliable. Question, which of the following is not true? A, measurement bias impacts accuracy. Is that true? Absolutely. B, data should be valid, reliable, and accurate to be useful. Is that true? Absolutely. You want all three. C, data cannot be reliable, but inaccurate. So can data be reliable, but lack validity and accuracy? Absolutely. One does not guarantee the other two will occur. So C is not true. Okay, so that is, in essence, validity, reliability, and accuracy. Don't overcomplicate it, right? Accuracy, you're measuring the true value. Validity, you're measuring what you intend to measure. Reliability, you're measuring it over and over again, the same way, producing the same results. Nothing more complicated than that. Always, always, always keep this stuff simple. Because in your job, you're going to have to explain this stuff simply to stakeholders and clients. As always, please subscribe for all of our updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exam. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.